Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is the last recommendation video for Cloak and Dagger Christmas. For this video, I want to recommend books for the prompt of Detective Galileo and that is to read a translated mystery or a one set in a country different from yours. So I'm going to start with some translated mysteries um, and I'm going to start with the um, this one is called I Am Your Judge by Nella Newhouse, and this has been translated from the German. Um, now, this one is from 2016. I quite enjoy this series, and I'm not going to get the names right, but they are about a police detective, Pia Kirchhoff, and her partner, Oliver von Bodenstein. Um, and these are set in Frankfurt or near Frankfurt. I think. Um, and so I've read a number of them in this series. This one I actually have not read yet, so this is on my list for Cloak and Dagger Christmas. I quite enjoy these. I really like the writing style. They're good mysteries, good characters. Unfortunately, only four of the seven of this series have been translated. The first three have not yet been translated into English, and I don't I don't know why they started with the fourth one in the series. Um, I think that that's really weird, but I really hope that they that they eventually translate the first three into English as well. Okay, and then um, the the Human Flies by Hans Olaf Lachlum. Um, this has been translated from Norwegian. This one is the first in the series that came out in 2014, and there are now four in this series. This one was really fun. It was kind of Agatha Christie-esque and um, also set in the 60s, which, which I thought was great. So um, these are set in Oslo. This first one is 1968 and the detective inspector is Colborn Christensen. They call him K2 and he partners up with um, this woman who is in a wheelchair following an accident and her name is Patricia and uh, he talks about his cases to her and she helps him she helps him solve them so yeah so this is a fun series um, if you want to try um, one that if you like kind of the historical aspect of it having it set in the 60s um, and this one is set in Norway specifically in Oslo and then we have The Tenet by Katrine Engberg this came out in 2020 and this has been translated from the Danish. There are um, two so far in the series, but a third one is slated to come out in 2022. This is again about a police officer, two detectives um, in Copenhagen, Jeppe Kerner and Annette Werner. Um, again, I'm, I'm sure I'm totally butchering these names, but this, the, uh, these are fun as well. So these are, again, police, police procedurals set in Denmark. All right, and then for something a little bit different, we have the Antipoli series by Mario Giordano. These have been translated from the German, and there are four in this series, and this series is so much fun. Auntie Poldy is um, an amateur sleuth, so there's a crossover here if you want to double up on your prompts. They are set in Sicily. She, in this first one, she is recently widowed and she moves to Sicily and gets herself involved in an investigation. These ones are fun. Um, I like that she is an older, an older character. Um, and I also just like the way that these stories are told. So these stories are narrated by her nephew, who at least in the first book is unnamed. I can't remember if we ever find out his name or not. Um, they're narrated by him, but the main character is, is Auntie Poldy. And, and then every once in a while, we get... Um, conversations between the two of them so you kind of most of the time you get the story he's telling and then sometimes you're pulled out to have this conversation between the two of them I just really like it I like it when um, authors find sort of unusual ways to tell a story and I feel like this fits the bill this is a really fun series 
Okay, and then we have the Tokyo Zodiac Murders by Soji Shimada. This has been translated from the Japanese, uh, translated into the English in 2015, although this book was originally published in uh, 1981, and it was first published in English in 2004. This edition is from 2015. This one was really fun. This was very Agatha Christie again. Um, and there's two timelines. Japan, 1936, an eccentric artist is living surrounded by seven women and he has been found dead in a room locked from the inside. And he has, he has this document that is found that includes a complicated plan to kill the, those seven women. And then soon after he's been found dead, those seven women are found dismembered and buried across rural Japan. So it was a really weird case. And then 1979, we have um, two, two people who decide to try and solve that case, a mystery obsessed illustrator and a talented astrologer. And this one was just, this one was just really fun. I liked the locked room aspect of it. And uh, it, yeah, like I said, it felt very Agatha Christie. Okay, The Dead Mountaineers Inn by Boris and Arkady Strugatsky. This has been translated from the Russian and the version that I have is from 2015, but I believe this was first written, yes, in 1970. And what makes this interesting is that these two, Boris and Arkady Strugatsky, are science fiction writers but they decided to try their hand at a mystery and at a somewhat traditional mystery. They just gave it their own spin. So we have an isolated setting um, because our main character goes to, uh, he goes on a skiing holiday. So he's in a chalet and it gets cut off because of the weather. His name is Inspector Peter Glebski. And, um, so on the one hand, it's very Agatha Christie, uh, but on the other hand, it is also very Boris and Arkady Strugatsky. And so never forget when you're reading this that they are science fiction writers <laughs> as well. I really enjoyed this one. I thought this one was really fun. I'm not entirely sure where in Russia this takes place. I can't remember, but I did, I did enjoy this one as well. And then how can we not talk about Georges Simenon and his Maigre series? He was highly prolific. He wrote 75 books between 1931 and 1973 that were about Maigre. He also wrote a lot of other books as well. These have been translated from the French. This is the first one in the series called Peter the Latvian. Um, now there are a few options for you here if you're looking for holiday themed versions or short stories. Um, A Maigre Christmas and other stories. There are three short stories set in Paris at Christmas. So if you're looking for holiday holiday sh short stories, that's a good option. One of those is a Maigre if you want. And um, again, there's some crossover here. You can double up on your prompts if you read, especially the early Maigre, then there are ones that gold, golden age mysteries. And then last but not least, we have the Hangman Daughters, the Hangman's Daughter series by Oliver Pocht. Po yeah, again, I'm not going to say it right. <laughs> These have been translated from the German. There are seven in this series so far. This first one came out in 2010. This is a kind of a gritty historical mystery series, but I quite like it. Um, the main character is Magdalena. She is the daughter of Bavarian hangman Jacob Kuzel. And these books are set in the 1600s. This first book in the series is set in 1659. So they are a tad gritty because Jacob is the hangman and so his job is quite gritty. Um, it's not horrible though, like it's not totally over the top, but it is a bit, it is a bit. Um, yeah, again, this is another series that, uh, that I quite enjoy. Okay, let's move on to mysteries set in a country different from yours. 
So of course, I am going to be recommending books that are set in any country other than Canada. Um, I don't know where you live, so some of these might work for you and some of them might not, but these are what I have for you. Let's start with A Will to Kill by R.V. Raman. These are set in India. This first one came out in 2019 and I'm very excited because the second one is coming out in December and I want to read it. Um, these are, again, very traditional Agatha Christie-esque type mysteries. The main character is Harith Athria. I'm, again, I'm sure I'm not going to say it uh, correctly. But we have a haunted banner house, estranged relatives, a will, and a murder. But all of it is set in modern day India. And so yeah, this one was really, really fun. So, and the author is Indian, um, but these just haven't been translated. They were, they were written in English. Okay, and then we have the Baby Ganesh series by Vaseem Khan. Again, these are set in India, modern day India. This is the first one in the series called The Unexpected Inheritance of Inspector Chopra from 2015. There are five in the series and I love this series. I love Inspector Chopra. He inherits a baby elephant who quite often follows him around and it's just really entertaining. They are set in modern day Mumbai and we meet his family and his friends and it's just, I really, really like this series a lot um, and I hope there are more coming out. We're staying in India. This is um, Murder in Old Bombay by Nev Marsh. I read this last year and I just loved it. This came out in 2020. It's a historical mystery set in 1892 Bombay and our main character is Captain Jim Agnihotri. <laughs> um, he loves Sherlock Holmes and so there's a lot of Sherlock Holmes references and he tries to investigate like Sherlock Holmes. Um, so you could also double up on some prompts here because uh, it's uh, set in the Victorian time period. It has an amateur sleuth. I just really, really liked it. There's a case that he read about in the newspaper that caught his attention of two women that fell from a university's clock tower. Um, and he gets asked by the family to look into it. Um, and it's, so it's a, it's a mystery, but there's also a bit of adventure. Um, and I, yeah, I really liked that one as well. I keep saying that I really liked all of these, which is why I'm recommending them to you. <laughs> okay, let's move away from India for a minute and we'll talk about the Bruno Chief of Police series by Martin Walker. These are set in France. This is the first one in the series that came out in 2008 and there are 14 so far with a 15th supposed to come out in 2022. They are set in the Dordogne region of France and we have Captain Bruno, who is the chief of police, and he kind of loves that the quiet, sleepy atmosphere. Um, but of course, it is quite often rocked by murder. Um, yeah, again, these are these are fun, fun series. I think that I'm currently on the third or the fourth one in the series. Um, I like that there is periodically um, references to World War II or even still some consequences coming out of the events of World War II. I like that connection in the series. And then heading back over to Asia area, um, there is this is Singapore Sapphire by A.M. Stewart. It is set in Singapore. This one came out in 2019. There, the second one is called Revenge in Rubies. And then there's a third one coming out next year. I'm really excited about that. Um, early 20th century Singapore. So these are historical mysteries. Um, this one is set in 1910. Harriet Gordon is wants a fresh start. So she moves to uh, Singapore to, to live with her brother. He runs a school there <clears throat> and she investigates. So you can double up here too with um, Amateur Sleuth. Um, 
yeah, again, this is another series that I, that I, yeah, that I'm enjoying and I'm glad that there is a third one coming out. Okay, let's move over to the Caribbean with the Death in Paradise series by Robert Thorogood. These are, he is the creator of the Death in Paradise show, which I really, really love. And so he has written five, I think, four original stories based on those characters. Um, he wrote them between 2015 and 2018. This is Murder in the Caribbean, which is, mm, he wrote this in 2018. So it's the third, it's the fourth. Um, it's the fourth one. So these are uh, the early seasons of Death in Paradise. So it's D.I. Richard Poole and um, and his team. Uh, yeah, I just love these. These are great mysteries. They're quite often locked room or impossible crimes. And let's head over to Scotland. This is Whiskey from Small Glasses by Denzel Mayrick. Um, this came out in 2012. There are nine in the series. Um, and I, I found this one just kind of it, uh, in a bookstore or a thrift store. And I was just attracted to the title. I thought the title was great. This is the first in the DCI Dally series. Um, and so he gets sent from Glasgow to this small coastal um town on the west coast of Scotland. So I'm not entirely sure if he gets sent out of Glasgow for all of the books because I've only read this one in the series. Um, but yeah, I thought it, I thought it was it was good and I liked the setting of that one. Okay, and then <laughs> we're going back to Asia for the Inspector Singh series by Shamini Flint. This, there are seven in this series and I love it because each book is in a different country in Asia. The first one here is a most peculiar Malaysian murder. Inspector Singh works for the Singapore police force, but he gets sent out to other countries to investigate for each of the books. And in this one, he gets sent to Malaysia. We, we have uh, books that go, he goes to Bali, he goes to Indonesia, he goes to India. He goes to, um, I can't remember now, but, um, but yeah, they're great. And, uh, I really like them. He's, he's a good character. I really like his character and I, they're good mysteries. And I, I just enjoy reading mysteries set in countries that I am not that familiar with. And then, uh, we're going to end back in India <laughs> with the, um, uh, Captain Sam Wyndham series by Abir Mukherjee. This is the first one, A Rising Man, that came out in 2016, and there are five in this series. Um, I like that these historical mysteries, they take place in India in 19... Ni the first one's 1919, yeah. Um, and it's Calcutta. So he fought during the First World War and then he goes over to India and joins the police force. He is partnered with, um, oh, I've forgotten his name already, Sergeant Banerjee. Um, and these are, these are great. Um, I really, I really like the, the kind of the political landscape that's happening in these books. And, and Sam, his struggle against kind of the, the institutional racism that he is used to, um, struggling against kind of his own, what he really believes that's starting to come out based on his, his own experiences and his own relationships. And uh, yeah, I, I, it's, it's good. So that's another, another good series set in India. And then if you are looking for some short story options, um, this is called Continental Crimes, Foreign Rivals of Sherlock Holmes, Early Detective Tales by the Contemporaries of Arthur Conan Doyle. This has been edited by Hugh Green. And this one has um, mysteries from various countries 
Also, there's some translated short stories in here. So if you could get a hold of this or any of these particular short stories, um, in the introduction, he says, I have limited this collection, as I did The Rivals of Sherlock Holmes, to stories published between the first appearance of Sherlock Holmes in the Strand magazine in 1891 and the outbreak of war in 1914. So you could also double up and use some of these for Victorian uh, mysteries. We have um, a Victorian uh, era short story set in France, a Victorian set in Switzerland, a Victorian one set in South Africa. Then we also have one set in Belgium. We have a French detective in London. Uh, one, a couple in the United States, another one in France. We have uh, one translated from the Danish and from German, another one, uh, another couple in France, and then one in Canada. So this is, this is great if you, um, if you're looking for, um, if you're looking for some, uh, short story options. So the translated ones, we have a sensible, a sensible course of action by Baron Pale Rosenkrantz. That's been translated from the Danish. I'm gonna put it, it up here so you can see how it's written. And then Anonymous Letters by Baldwin Kroller, translated from the German. So there you have it. Those are my recommendations for the Detective Galileo prompt. Do you read a lot of translated mysteries? Um, if you have any recommendations for me, I would love to hear about that in the comment section down below. And I will see you for another video soon. Bye.